Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to our webinar, the Sudanese American Medical Association and UNICEF USA. Uh, we would like to welcome uh, our audience uh, from the US, from Sudan, from all over the world. I uh, would like to welcome uh, Anne Maria Griffin, who is the UNICEF uh, Partnership Director in the USA. And I will, my name is Nahla Gadalla. I'm the Executive Director for the Sudanese American Medical Association. And we would like <clears throat> to give you an overview of the child, children's health um, situation in Sudan. Uh, today, celebrating World's Children's Day all over the world and raising awareness about children's health in Sudan and the need for a worldwide um, interventions and engagement of the global community on what, where support is needed and how to support organizations such as UNICEF, SAMA, and other um, local organizations working on health issues in Sudan. Um, so the current situation in Sudan with uh, all health uh, or situation is, is really dire. It's not surprising that the COVID has um, increased the current need. And it's also not surprising that the country being one of the least developing countries in the world has um, a, a huge need for uh, interventions in all health aspects, uh, spe especially our partnership speaks to the water sanitation and hygiene uh, program, which is the WASH program. So with our partnership with UNICEF, uh, SAMA, although existing in Sudan for five years now, uh, we feel that uh, partnering with UNICEF will enable us to help families ac access sufficient uh, safe water for drinking and personal hygiene and help us reach those communities uh, that are beyond our reach in, in the center of Sudan. UNICEF has a wide reach in Sudan, working all um, over the country at the national level from the far west to the far east um, and in some of the most uh, vulnerable areas. Uh, and, and this will enable SAMA to, and the global community to support uh, those people in need through the UNICEF uh, office in Sudan. Uh, we want to reach people with uh, awareness and messaging about appropriate hygiene and disease uh, prevention. Uh, we want to also help them uh, with medic supply medical professionals and families with uh, personal protective equipment, sanitation products, and other tools to prevent the spread of disease. And together with UNICEF, SAMA hopes to boost essential outreach to Sudan's most vulnerable children and communities through life-saving wash and disease prevention services. Uh, not only that, but UNICEF has also contributed significantly to the current COVID situation in the previous uh, seven months. Uh, up to Sunday, November the 15th, the data we have from Sudan is really um, staggering. Uh, there have been over 15,000 confirmed diagnosed cases. And we all know that when there is um, such a number, that means the community prevalence is much, much higher. Um, uh, on the order of magnitude, magnitudes. Um, we have um, a, uh, a fatal, community fatal rate of 7.8%, one of the highest in the world, with over 1,000 confirmed deaths that are attributed to COVID-19. Um, although recoveries ha have been in the range of 9,000, but this is all, um, again, just the known and confirmed cases. And we believe that the numbers are much, much higher than that. Um, it's also hitting the health uh, staff uh, considerably. Uh, the positivity rate for health staff was about 68.9% of those tested um, in, in, in the recent uh, two weeks. So all this data really um, sheds the light on the severity of the situation. Uh, of the health situation generally in Sudan and bringing uh, to our attention that this is really um, affecting the most vulnerable, the most uh, in need children, uh, women and girls um, in the country. And uh, with that uh, message, I would like to pass to Anne Maria, uh, who will speak to us a little bit more about our partnership 
and how we aim to help the people in Sudan and the children uh, of Sudan uh, on, and shed light on this situation today on World Children's Day. Anne Maria? Thanks, thanks very much. Thanks very much, Nala. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here to participate in the Sama UNICEF, uh, UNICEF USA webinar, especially today because as Nala mentioned, it is World Children's Day. And for almost 60 years, the UN has commemorated this day to promote international togetherness and awareness among children worldwide and, and the general improvement of, of children's welfare. So it's, it's a pleasure to be here on this day. We, we see World Children's Day as a time to, as we like to say, reimagine, reimagine a better future for every child. So that means it's time to celebrate and demand action for children's rights. And so today we were focusing on the situation and the special partnership we have that will support the children of Sudan. Um, in today's webinar, we're hoping to highlight the difficult circumstances in, in Sudan. Nala has already begun to, to mention a bit of, of what is happening there. And, but also to shine a light on, on the valuable work that the UNICEF country office is, is doing there and this local staff and, and really making progress. And we're, and we're hoping to really bring everyone up to, to, to date on what, where we stand and how we can do more even over the next year through this partnership. Thanks to Dr. Gadala from the Sudanese American Medical Association, who, who's actually brought us together, as well as with um, with alliances, uh, the Sudan Next Gen, and of course, young volunteers. At UNICEF USA, we respect and want to accentuate the critical voices of the diaspora organizations. Um, the U.S. is home to the largest diaspora population in the world. At least 60, 68 million first and second generation Americans identify as, as diaspora. So it's great to see such powerful stakeholders. Uh, UNICEF is privileged to be trusted by your membership as we dedicate ourselves to uh, implement life-changing programs. I'm with the Global Cause Partnership Unit within UNICEF USA. Um, I'm Senior Director for Diaspora and Multicultural Partnerships. So Partnerships is, is what we live and breathe at UNICEF USA. And so our partnership with SAMA is, is very important to us. Um, as, as Nala mentioned, we hope through the support of SAMA to combat the spread of COVID-19 by addressing the water, sanitation and hygiene issues. Uh, UNICEF's country office will, will circulate prevention messages and bring access to safe water, build sanitation facilities and provide protective equipment in Sudan and, and much more. The diaspora organizations for us serve as a welcome bridge on the, uh, built on the deep connection and conviction of far flung populations. So as a result, the communities are connected to diaspora populations that will reap the benefits. So in the end, we'll all see more impact on the ground. So that's why we're very excited. And that's why we've come together today. Our voices together can be quite powerful and transformative. UNICEF USA embraces the commitment of the Sudanese diaspora and we hope They'll be continuing over, over the years and enhanced, um, enhancing our work and enhancing the world's awareness of what is happening in Sudan. The whole idea is to do good and um, be supportive and to form sustainable linkages emboldening these connections with, with UNICEF's work for children of the children of Sudan. Um, so wanted to thank you for coming for our World, for world Children's Day. And we hope you'll learn a little bit, maybe have a chance to share, and even through the chat function, um, ask questions you might have. I wanted to um, open up the possibility now of looking at a video that will, will give you a better sense of what is happening on the ground within the UNICEF country office in Sudan. Please, Kelly. الحمد لله هسه مجرد ما كورونا دبت هنا بيجينا ما شاء الله قصة دينا بالماء والصابون والحمد لله الناس اللي ما قصروا معنا قاعد دائما قاعدين بيجونا بيقولون الإرشادات ونقبل جرد ما دخلنا قبل ما نخش المرحاق قصة دينا بالماء والصابون بعد ما خرجنا قصة دينا بالماء والصابون جيت من السوق أطلع ببرة في 
نشوفه في الهدايا في السلك نخش المطبخ نغسل الدنيا نخش المطبخ نعمل الاكل بعد ما عملت الاكل جيت ناكل زاد نغسل الدنيا بالماء الصابون الحمد لله Thank you. And Salma, would you like to yes. offer some remarks? Thank you. And thank you, Anna Maria. Um, hi, everyone. Um, it's a pleasure being here. Uh, just a quick introduction about myself. So my name is Salma Abdel Majid. Um, you know, I'm a Sudanese Canadian, uh, one of the many Sudanese in the diaspora, trying to do whatever we can to help the situation in Sudan. A little bit of my background, um, um, I, I really, my I work currently as a senior nutrition scientist in the private sector. My my area of of of, um, of focus is um, child and infant nutrition. So so you know very closely kind of related to what we we're talking about today um, in the World Children's Day. So I will highlight a little bit of um, what's happening in Sudan, and I think reiterate some of like the quick points that were shown on the video. So wash is a major. Um, major challenge in Sudan, water, sanitation, and hygiene. Um, and these, in many cases, would correlate to malnutrition, could be associated with poverty and lack of education in some cases. Sudan is a geographically large country. I mean, it was the, was the largest country in Africa until recently, and still now is the second largest country in Africa. The population of Sudan is, I think, just below 44 million people. And as you've seen, a third of that population does not have access to toilets. So open defecation is a major problem, um, uh, disproportionately affecting girls and, and women. But also access to clean water, as you've seen, is, is a major problem. Some reports um, uh, report more than 10 million Sunnis people not having access to clean water. And um, access to, to wash um, is not just a problem for families and homes and single households, but it's a problem institutions as well. So there's limited access to wash facilities in schools and in primary healthcare um, centers. 50% of schools need improved access to wash and improved access to clean water. Um, these challenges, um, I think needless to say, would um, have different degrees um, based on maybe the different regions, different states, rural versus urban centers, um, and they reflect the disparity between the rich and the poor. So, um, but they can also, and I think this is a very important point, they can be exacerbated by other factors. The deteriorating economy is one of these factors, right? Um, political unrest or civil conflicts in some regions, and sometimes also just the climate change. An example would be the recent crisis of flooding in Sudan. We know um, from the past, you know, cholera sometimes can be associated or comes kind of as a result of, of flooding crises. Um, but again, with COVID-19 and, and the deteriorating economy, um, these all of these issues are further um, really propagated and, and amplified. So over to you, Lena. Yeah, um, thank you so much for having me. A quick little introduction. Um, I am, uh, my name is Lena. I'm a second year um, pre-medical student at Washington University in St. Louis. Um, and I've been doing um, a little bit of work with the Sudanese American Medical Association for quite a few months. Um, and it has by far been a very, a, one of my most rewarding experiences, getting to engage in some of the uh, really important work that Sama does in Sudan um, and hearing about um, all of the like stories of um, change that some of this uh, work um, has um, affected. Um, and just a little bit about some of the goals um, of um, volunteer work um, and specifically in Sudan um, that we hope to see. Um, I think a huge goal is to sort of mobilize the immense livelihood and activity of those in, in the diaspora and beyond um, in extending a helping hand in addressing and solving some of the central issues in Sudan. Um, some of these challenges are with uh, wash, the water, sanitation and health and hygiene um, services. Um, some of the disparities that that can cause and the long-term significance that that can carry. Um, for example, like um, Dr. Salma was um, 
explaining about how this can disproportionately affect some um, aspects, some members of the community and how that can carry on forward, um, looking at the long term impact of those on women, for example, in Sudan. Uh, these are the same women who are going to be the leaders in Sudan in the future, holding leadership positions and affecting um, change. Um, some of these um, these goals can be achieved through engaging with global communities worldwide and really looking into that um, global intervention um, in helping to sort of engage with the most vulnerable communities in Sudan. Um, as a volunteer, like I mentioned, it's been a, a, a rewarding, immensely rewarding experience. And I get to see some of the really influential work that can be done and the potential there um, in volunteering, whether through raising sums of money that can be used to build infra infrastructure um, and affect systemic change, um, or to in training uh, midwives or teaching children or providing food and medical supplies. Um, I think there's so much power in what volunteer work can do. Um, and raising awareness in itself is a huge goal of volunteering. Um, and sort of starting these conversations about some of the issues that need to be addressed in providing um, anyone globally with the opportunity to help. Now I'll pass, I'll pass on to um, Nada. Thank you, everyone, and thank you for having me. My name is Nada Fadol, and I'm an associate professor of infectious diseases at University of Nebraska Medical Center. I'm also the vice chair and co-founder of Sudan Next Gen, and we're extremely honored to have this partnership with SAMA and UNICEF to try to help our country with, through this crisis of lack of access to clean water and sanitary toiletry. So I just want to touch base a little bit on the experience that we had uh, of how professionals came together to help Sudan during the COVID-19 pandemic. This was a, a time that was pretty hard for our country, as we all know, and Nahla spoke to that a few minutes ago. Uh, what we witnessed at that time is that professionals from various disciplines came together and done amazing jobs supporting Sudan. Um, but during the pandemic, we witnessed some unique experiences where professional organizations as community organizations and community organizations came together and formed a coalition and exchanged knowledge, expertise, and technical uh, capabilities to try to support Sudan and overcome this crisis. They did not only provide financial aid to the country, but they also provide uh, transfer of knowledge, transfer of technology. And I think this experience was uh, pretty much unprecedented of how, how diaspora can come together to help uh, the country in a very organized, uh, very meticulous and well thought fashion. And it's really an experience that's worth repeating. And that's what we're hoping to do here today, uh, to come together, put expertise of different organizations uh, under the leadership uh, of UNICEF, SAMA, and in collaboration with NextGen and other organization. And we're trying to replicate some of that experience to try to help uh, our country through this really terrible problem that it's facing. So thank you, everyone, and back to you. Thank, thank you very much, Nada. Oh. Nala, you're, you're on mute, but I just wanted to ask if perhaps you could offer a translation at this stage. Yes. Uh... So I'm going to give a little bit of a translation um, to our um, audience because we expect some of audience um, from Sudan. And Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Ma'akum Nahla Jadallah, al Mudira Tanfizi, the Jamia Tabia Sudania Ambikia. مع المستضيفين الليلة مستضيفيننا يونيسيف مكتب يونيسيف يو اس اي والفانالست المعانا دكتورة ندى فضل ودكتورة سلمى عبد المجيد وأستاذة لينا نديم والأستاذة آن ماريا جريفين من يونيسيف يو اس اي عشان نكلمكم عن الوضع في السودان وطبعا الوضع في السودان لا يخفى عليكم لكن عايزين نحن نجمع الخبرات العالمية للسودانيين وغير السودانيين المهتمين بأمر السودان عشان نجتمع كلنا مع بعض ونشوف التحديات اللي بتواجه الأطفال في السودان ومن أهمها 
واهم يعني من اهم البرامج اللي بتقوم بها يونيسف في السودان البرنامج بتاع توفير المياه الصالحه للشرب وتوفير المراحيض الصحيه اللي هو الووتر سانيتيشن اند هايجين بروجرام والبروجرام البرنامج ده بيهدف لانه يصلح او يوفر دورات مياه صحيه في المدارس في المناطق الطرفيه وده بيؤدي لزياده رياده الاطفال للمدرسه وخاصه البنات منهم اللي هم بيكونوا في سن بعد البلوغ بالاضافه لكذا البرنامج بيهدف لانه يوفر الهايجين برودكتس للبنات والنساء عشان يسمح لهم بالحركه والتحرك في المجتمع ويكونوا اعضاء فاعلين في المجتمع ونحن هنا تتكلم الدكتوره ندى عن تحالف المنظمات السودانيه ولما انه السودانيين يجتمعوا ويحددوا الهدف بتاعهم ويستفيدوا من خبرات كل المختلفه كيف ممكن ننجز وكيف ممكن نقدم للبلد وكان المثال التحالف بتاع الكورونا اتكلم الدكتوره سلمى عبد المجيد اللي هي اخصائيه بتاعت تغذيه في شركه كنديه بيعملوا بيقوموا بتصنيع الوجبات الغذائيه للاطفال والدور اللي ممكن يقدموه للسودان في تنمية صحة الطفل وتوفير دورات المياه السليمة والصحة العامة والإرشادات والتوعية الممكن نقدمها للمجتمع وتكلمت لينا عبد علي نديم اللي هي طالبة في جامعة واشنطن في ميزوري تدرس جينات نيرو ساينسز عن تجربتك متطوعة مع سامة في الكم شهر اللي فاتوا عن تجربتها وكيف ممكن المتطوعين السودانيين الشباب ممكن يساهموا في البرامج اللي بتقوم بها جميع المنظمات السودانية ومن ضمنها سامة ومشاركتهم الفعالة في أنهم يكونوا رسل أو أمباسيدرز لرسالة السودان في الخارج الترجمة ما حرفية لكن ترجمة للمفهوم العام للويبنار وبنشكركم على أنكم جيتوا قابلتونا أو قعدتوا معنا الليلة إسفيريا وشاركتونا الاحتفال بيوم الطفل العالمي وإذا في أي أسئلة ممكن نجاوب عليها ممكن تكتبوها في الشات لو معنا في اللايف أو معنا في الويبنار في سؤال اصلا في الويبنار كنت عايزه اقراه اللي هو كان السؤال من احد الحاضرين للويبنار والسؤال بيقول انه كيف ممكن الناس خارج السودان تساهم في التنميه بتاعت الدول المحتاجه للتنميه زي السودان وغيره من غير ال التبرعات النقدية فأنا حقول الكلام ده بالإنجليزي عشان الناس المعانا وبعدين ما بدعنا نجاوبه uh, So uh, I finished the translation but there is a question from one of the attendees uh, about uh, what can be uh, what the diaspora can do to assist countries that are in conflict such as uh, Syria, Yemen and Sudan other than fundraising and financial support um in develop and in development and becoming independent um so thank you very much for attending um, this webinar and thank you for your question and uh i will speak a lot you know let you know a little bit about what sama is doing and what other um, sudanese diaspora organizations are doing and then i will revert to Anne maria to tell us what Sud um, unicef is doing um so most of the sudanese diaspora organizations um like we said earlier and i spoke to that We came together during the COVID uh, crisis, and we came together actually in 2019 first for the revolution. And this support has been tremendous and instrumental to the success of the revolution that happened in 2019 uh, by providing technical support, transfer of knowledge, providing equipment, and providing um, guidance at all levels 
whether it was, um, you know, political, raising awareness, campaigning, lobbying in, at the highest levels of international community. Um, and then at the technical expertise, the technical support, how to provide safe telecommunication during those uprisings, it was amazing. Um, then came the COVID in 2020, and most of these organizations that did form in 2019 came together again. And we were in a coalition of about 57 uh, professional associations and uh, grassroots local organizations, community organizations, uh, youth, older generations, and they all came together with one uh, big goal of helping um, the Sudanese uh, Ministry of Health navigate the COVID crisis. And it was an amazing, overwhelming support at all levels. And I think Neda was one of the huge multitaskers that I would really like to um, commend. Uh, she, she attended, I think, about 10 meetings a day, if I'm not exaggerating, with different organizations. She was um, on the top of many of many um, technical assistants with their expertise as uh, physicians. We had um, expertise from the engineering side. We have expertise from the IT support. There was uh, call centers established by the engineers. Uh, engineers came up with ways of uh, sanitizing uh, hospitals and sanitizing the equipment uh, in a feasible, uh, you know, feasible and uh, doable manner that brought or um, uh, utilized the existing resources without the need for um, equipment or um, expensive uh, interventions that we did not have at that time. Um, the medical community came uh, together. They were raising awareness. They were doing um, extensive uh, webinars, seminars, um, meetings with the health uh, authorities in Sudan, with the health cadre in Sudan. And that is not just in the main cities, it was across the country. All this support, I think, was really helpful in making people overcome, overcome uh, the devastating impact of, of COVID that the whole world has um, in the, um, experienced. And if it was not for that support, adding to that the financial support, the Sudanese community was overwhelmingly supportive to the COVID-19 um, pandemic in Sudan. Uh, I can't, I don't have the figures, but I'm sure that many hundreds of thousands of dollars were raised from individuals in the diaspora just to support um, our people back in Sudan with PPE, with uh, COVID test uh, um, kits, with uh, guidance and, and awareness and, and making the health environment uh, safe for the health workers and preventing many, many uh, strikes from the health workers from happening by intervening at the right time and providing them with the PPE that they needed to carry out um, their work and, uh, and help those people who are suffering. Uh, ventilators, uh, machines, everything was provided in, in, in an extraordinary um, and unbelievable uh, short time. And, with, and this all happened by the Sudanese people themselves. Um, in addition to the support that we received from the UN organizations all the world, uh, I think the Sudanese people really came together at that um, time. Uh, coming back on, on the question on how to build the system so these people would become independent, uh, SAM actually is one of the organizations that believes in development. And all we do is sustainable development. We, and the way we are doing it as a health organization, we are focusing on training the frontline health workers, the people who work there in those communities to become uh, independent, gain the skills that they need to, do, to deliver the service uh, to the women and children of those communities. Currently, SAMA has a wide scale midwifery training program at the national level in Sudan in partnership with JAPAICO, a nonprofit out of Johns Hopkins University, uh, into introducing the Helping Mothers Survive uh, modules for bleeding after birth and eclampsia to combat a maternal death. Um, this program started in 2016. To date, we have trained over 1,400 midwives in eight states in Sudan. Um, and uh, this year in 2020, we introduced the Helping Babies Breathe module, which is training midwives to resuscitate and um, intervene when, baby, uh, when the babies are born 
and facing um, breathing uh, problems that can lead to Im immediate death. And these two programs go hand in hand, training the same health provider to care for the newborn and the mother at the same time, saving many, many lives. And, and this is one of the, I think was one, one of the sustainable development goals is providing, um, having a, health, a skilled birth attendant uh, in every village, at least in, in their community. Um, our other programs is providing medical supplies across the country. Although we do not provide um, as much as needed because the gap is huge, uh, but we have a sustainable ongoing uh, year round program for medical supplies provided to, to as many hospitals uh, as we can and to as many communities as we can. Um, so, uh, uh, you know, um, we, while we are a sort of a medium sized organization uh, working on these two projects, uh, um, uh, mainly uh, helping those uh, people, but we believe this is one of the many, many uh, puzzle pieces needed for sustainable development. And that's why we are pursuing this avenue of, of training those frontline health providers in their communities to serve their communities. And with that, I will take it over to Anne Maria to show us um, or describe to us what UNICEF is doing to help those communities become independent. Okay, thanks very much for that comprehensive response, N Nala. I mean, I can say briefly, and I, and I wanted to get to a couple of other questions, so I don't wanna to talk too long on this, but really to emphasize, all of what Nala is saying and that the UNICEF office and the approach really is not just humanitarian um, um, issues and causes, but to focus on advocacy and policy change and system strengthening and long-term development um, concerns. And this of course is all in partnership with the government and local groups on the ground. I mean, it, it is all about partnerships for us, whether it's local groups and of course diaspora groups, but um, anyone who can help to raise awareness, that's a, a really critical part to the the, the development work and, and the in humanitarian um, concerns. So that that's critical. And I think that's a good way of, ex of describing how it's a comprehensive package of um, an approach that is used to, to um, address the issues in, in Sudan and, and everywhere actually in the world where, where UNICEF works. Um, how about, I, I'm just looking at the questions that have come, there are a couple, and I wanted to raise those as well as maybe just ask one or two from um, the list that I have. And that is, someone has asked us just, um, well, express this is how sad the situation is in Sudan and just wondering if in fact the entire country um, is, is suffering like we described or what the, what is seen or it, are there certain pockets I would imagine he's, he or she is referring to within Sudan. And I'm wondering if, if Salma or Nala or Nada could uh, respond to that. I, I can take a quick stab um, and, and then maybe Dr. Nahla or Dr. Nada could, could, can add on. But um, I would say first in general, the entire country is suffering. I mean, the economic situation in Sudan, um, it's just a challenge for, for everyone. And, um, and um, one of the things that I think, um, you know, that came with COVID-19, one of the challenges that came with COVID-19 um, is that really in Sudan, a large portion, I guess, a large number of our population depends or, or earn their income, you know, they're self, they're self employed, they earn their income on a daily basis based on them working on the market or so on. And so COVID-19, um, for example, when you have a, the government putting on um, lockdowns to, to try and, you know, contain the spread of the disease, that means more and more people are falling into poverty because they no longer have that um, daily income. So, and you know, poverty means um, more susceptibility to disease. Um, and, and, so, and so, yes, the short answer is everybody is suffering. Yes, the, like I said earlier, the degree of challenge changes from one place to another or differs from one region to another. Um, and I think Nada or I think it's Nada or Nahla earlier um, mentioned the COVID-19 fatality rate right now in Sudan, maybe around six, seven percent. But in, in northern Darfur, it's been reported up to 37 percent. And that is very high. Um, so 37 percent of 
people who contracted COVID-19 died. So, so yes, in general, there, the suffering is across the board, but definitely there are some areas that suffer more than others. Um, I don't know if Nahla or another one add. Yeah, and I, I totally agree with Selma. And I would like to add to that too, is one finding that sometimes we overlook is that the median age of Sudan population right now is about 19. And it differs from one source to another, but technically that's kind of the agreed upon uh, median age of the population. We all know that COVID-19 has a different impact depending on age groups. So that age group probably doesn't really experience a lot of uh, trouble with COVID-19, maybe not even symptoms. So they could be going around having you know, the infection, but spreading it to others who are high risk without experiencing any symptoms. And that, what that does is that that completely underestimate the prevalence of the disease in the country because a large piece of the population could be asymptomatic or very minimal symptomatic and does not seek healthcare for what they're experiencing. So when we're saying that, you know, we have, you know, 13, 15,000 cases, you know, I think you can easily multiply that by five or 10, depending on the region, and you still might not, you might miss some of the cases. So what we're seeing right now is really the tip of the iceberg. We're seeing people who are sick enough that are, they're actually going to get tested or going to seek treatment. And that completely underrepresents the true problem that we're facing in Sudan right now. Uh, as Selma said, the Sudanese uh, healthcare system is completely uh, defunded right now. It's experiencing a lot of challenges. Uh, we have one outbreak out after another popping in different parts of the country. And that's adding to the challenge of responding to this uh, pandemic as well. So anything that we could do to help with the other problems that the country is, is experiencing is definitely going to help us, uh, you know, divert more resources to help with the pandemic. So the WASH program is one of those programs that if we can take that burden away from the government and put that burden on us, especially people in the diaspora who can, you know, with very little support can make a difference in that area, I think that will help the government direct resources in other areas uh, to try to combat this pandemic. Thanks, thank you. Thank you very much, Nada. I'm, I'm actually thinking, looking at the time, that perhaps we should go to just one more question. And, and actually, two questions have come asking about the role of volunteers and their impact. So I was going to reach out to, to Lena and maybe even Nala to, to describe what um, the role of the volunteers has been or will be in terms of the plans for uh, supporting this particular campaign. Thank, thanks. Lena? Yeah, thank you. Um, so um, in my experience, I think uh, one of the central goals of a volunteer is to sort of uh, raise awareness and um, sort of address those issues uh, and engage with our community. So reaching out to our friends, our families, um, and um, specifically like as a, as a college student, sort of starting up that conversation in my sphere, in my college, um, and um, letting everyone know about some of the amazing work of SAMA um, and uh, the recent strategic partnership with UNICEF and how one can get involved and what difference they can make. Um, so really um, engaging with that. Um, and we've spoken quite a bit about the, import the, um, the importance of reaching out to the youth, um, like like was mentioned, um, the youth make up a large population of Sudan and the Sudanese diaspora. Um, and we see that the youth are some of the most live, most active communities of um, people um, who are really willing to stand up um, with any sort of humanitarian um, campaign that um, will like speak to them. And so really sort of um, capitalizing on that um, and using that to make a difference can um, can take us really far with, um, with um, the campaign of Sama. Thanks very much, Lina. Yeah, thank you, Lina. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, we always need volunteers. Um, we're in need of different expertise and skills as a health, a health organization. Um, we don't just focus, you know, we don't just need physicians to, to help uh, perform the technical work, but we also need uh, skills like graphic designers, web admins, uh, um, social media. Uh, officers, communications officers, just by to help us uh, spread and raise awareness about what's going on in Sudan and uh, in general and about our programs um, specifically. So if there's anyone out there that any wants or is able to volunteer, just go to SAMA website. There's a volunteer form where you can um, uh, join 
And if you want to specifically join us on the SAMA UNICEF uh, partnership, just reach out to me by email and let me know. We already have a few volunteers um, and we are communicating with and they are helping us with, with this partnership. So welcome aboard anyone who is interested uh, from any profession and any skills and expertise that they can provide. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Nala. Um, so at this stage, I'll just ask Nada to close us out. Thank you. So, قبل ما أقفل الوبينار عايزة بس أعمل ملخص للكلام اللي تقال في الآخر دية ببساطة كده يا جماعة إحنا محتاجين لكم محتاجين لدعمكم محتاجين لدعمكم المادي محتاجين لدعمكم اللوجستي محتاجين لمتطوعين يجي يساعدوا في الشغل دية الشغل ده ما سهل يعني إحنا كلنا متذكرين لما كنا في السودان لما كنا في المدارس لما كنا في السوق الواحد يكون حايم ما يلقى مويه يشربه ما يلقى حمام نظيف يمشي له ما يلقى يعني حياة بسيطة جدا متوفرة لك انت هنا في الغربة في اي ملف بتلقى لك حمام بتلقى ماسورة فاونتين بتاعت موية وفي السودان عشان تلقى لك اكسس لحاجة زي دي حتى في العاصمة في الخرطوم بتدعب روحك تطلع لحد ما ترجع البيت بتخيل بس معاي الناس في القرى في الحتات البعيدة الاطفال دي المرات بيهاجروا هجرة عشان يمشوا بس يجيبوا لهم موية نظيفة رجعوا على البيت الواحد بيكون حايم اليوم كله ما يلقى له حمام نظيف يضطر يطلع فضلاته في برا في الشارع وتخيل المشاكل ممكن تحصل من الحاجة دي الأمراض اللي ممكن تنتشر بسبب الحاجة دي فيعني الدعم اللي ممكن تقدمه ممكن يعمل فرق كبير جدا جدا يعني إحنا بنتكلم عن مثلا خمسة دولار بس خمسة دولار ممكن توفر موية نظيفة لطفل لمدة سنة تخيل معاي يعني خمسة دولار أنت مشي بيها ستاربكس تشتري لك كوباية بتاعة قهوة تشربها وبتنتهي في لحظتها، لكن للطفل في السودان ممكن توفر له مويه نظيفه لمده سنه، يعني انا صراحه حسي حسب الخجل من القروش اللي انا بضيعها هنا في امريكا وهي ممكن تعمل شنو بالنسبه للاطفال في السودان. 38 دولار 38 دولار بس دي ممكن توفر لها 10,000 حبه بتاعت نظافه مويه او تطهير المويه في السودان. يعني احنا بنتكلم عن حاجة ما عايزينكم ما عايزين آلاف ما عايزين مئات عايزين مبالغ بسيطة جدا وإيد على عيد زي ما بقول بتجدع بعيد فكل واحد لو أضاف هنا حبة من هنا وحبة من هنا في النهاية will make a big difference so just to summarize and close us out we're asking for help it's really disheartening to all of us to think about the suffering and the hardship that our children our young brothers and sisters go through in Sudan every single day to be able to access clean water and to have access to clean basic toilets. We've been through this struggle, let's be real. We've all lived in Sudan, we went to public schools, we've seen how hard it is to be able to access a clean toilet. We've seen how hard it is to be able to access clean water in Sudan. We vividly remember those moments and that struggle that we've been through. And you know, I, I grew up in a city I did not grow up in rural areas. So imagine how hard it is for people who are in remote areas in Darfur and Eastern Sudan, how hard it is for them to access that. We have a world uh, renowned organization like UNICEF who has programs all over the world and an organization like SAMA who has exemplary history of executing programs in Sudan. And if we put our resources towards these organizations, we don't need to reinvent the wheel. The, the foundation of this work is already there. All we need is financial support. As I mentioned, $5 will give one child access to clean water for a whole year. I mean, just imagine the $5 you go spend at Starbucks today and you drink that cup in five minutes can give one child access to clean water for a whole year. That's all we're asking. Just a small amount of donations can add up to each other and make a difference for these children. So please donate, please volunteer. The donation link is in the chat. So click on that link right now and donate whatever you can. Please help this program. Thank you so much. Thank you, Nida. And I just want to add for people in Sudan who don't have access to online donations, I'm sure you know someone who's outside Sudan who can help you with that. So just reach out to your network, uh, share this event, share our call, and, and by that you will be helping. Um, there are so many avenues and so many ways of supporting and helping, not just only by donating, but also by spreading the word, raising awareness. Um, and we really need to raise awareness. I think one of the most successful tools that helped 
the revolution was awareness. There was a lot of campaigning and people stood together to do that. And they did it in a systematic and um, a very high profile political way. It wasn't just a revolution on the road that changed the regime. And today we need to stand, to stay, to stand back together, come together again and support our country to move ahead with the development that it needs. And the development starts in, the, in those rural areas. It doesn't start in the center. That's why we are focusing in rural areas. That's why we are focusing on these vulnerable people to bring aid to them, to help them. When we help them with their daily needs, we are relieving them so that they can reach their potential. Because now when they are exhausted by looking for water, they are exhausted by thinking of where to go if they have a health issue, if we are supporting them by providing them clean water that they can drink and survive, that we're relieving them to reach their potential by focusing on other things that really help the development on their work because productivity, productivity is very important and it, it's, it, it needs a lot of energy. But if, you are en if your energy is exhausted in just the search for water or search for a, um, a toilet, let's say a lady who does not have access to a toilet or does not have access to a sanitary pad, we are wasting her time and energy by, by not helping her. But when we help her with these small things that we can get to her, she can be more productive in her community, goes to school, learn, become a leader. Um, and like Nada said, I, we grew up in cities. We didn't grow up in rural areas, but I can tell you for sure, I went maybe through my whole school system without going to a school toilet because they are unbearable. Um, and that was back uh, when Sudan was in a much better situation than it is in today. Um, so I will go, to go back and just say these two words in Arabic quickly. It is a quantum in Sudan, معانا الليلة حاضرنا وما قادر تشارك معانا بالخمسة دولار أو العشرة دولار ممكن تغير حياة إنسان وتوفر له وتوفر عليه طاقته عشان يبقى إنسان منتج في مجتمعه عندك مليون طريقة أخرى ممكن تشارك بها ممكن تشارك ال 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 الفيس لايف ده في الفيسبوك بتاعك ممكن تتصل بزول برا السودان تكلمه عن الإيفنت اللي أنت حضرته الليلة ممكن ترسله في جروب بتاع أسرة ممكن ترسله في جروب بتاع واتساب We have a... عندنا وسائل كثيرة جدا جدا ممكن ننشر بها الوعي والمعرفة والحصل التغيير الحصل في السودان في 2019 ما حصل إلا بالوعي والمعرفة وعمل دؤوب وجاد من ناس كثيرين جدا نعم الشارع ضغط نعم الشارع يعني الناس في السودان ما قصرت لكن التغيير الحصل فعلا حصل بأنه الناس البرة وقفت مع بعض والناس البرة وصلت الرسالة بتاعتها للناس المسؤولة ودي الحاجة اللي أحدثت التغيير بعد التغيير التطوير والتنمية التنمية ما بتجي إلا لما الناس تقف مع بعض التنمية ما حتجي إلا لما نحن نطور الناس في الريف التنمية ما حتجي من المركز وإحنا ما حنقعد نلوم الحكومة عملت والحكومة قصرت والحكومة قالت ورئيس الوزراء عمل وفلان عمل ده ما تنمية السياسة مختلفة من التنمية خليهم هم يتكلموا في السياسة وهم تديل with السياسة السياسة very complicated نحن خلينا في التنمية بتاعت ناسنا مساعدة ناسنا ومساعدة أهلنا المحتاجين لنا في جميع ربوع السودان عشان نوفر لهم أساسيات الحياة اللي بالتالي حتزيح عنهم الكاهل بتاع الـ 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 الضغوط اللي بتمر بهم يوميا وتوفر لهم زمن ومجهود ممكن ينتجوا به لما هم يبقوا منتجين بعد ذاك هم حيساعدوا نفسهم وحيبقوا مستقلين بغض النظر عن الحاصل في الخرطوم شنو السودان ما هو الخرطوم أي نعم تنت السودان عايش في الخرطوم لكن السودان ما هو الخرطوم حتى الخرطوم فيها مناطق محتاجة لتنمية ومحتاجة لمساعد فمن هنا أنا بنوم صوتي لصوت ندى وبطلب منكم خمسة دولار اللي ممكن زي ما قالت ندى تشتري بها قهوة في مكدونالدز وجبة في مكدونالدز وتجدعها ولا قهوة في ستاربكس ستاربكس وما تكملة بتوفر لطفل موية لمدة سنة بتوفر لأسرة صابون وممكن يغنيها من إنها تمرض بتوفر كلورين حبة بتاع كلورين عشان نقدر نوفر لهم موية نظيفة تغنيهم من الأمراض وتغنيهم من إنهم يمشي يبحثوا عنها في في مناطق نائية تعرضهم للخطورة تعرضهم لتحرش جنسي تعرضهم لجميع المشاكل الممكن يتعرضوا لها
thank you, everybody. I think I just went on a little bit too long there, but it's, it's a very passionate, um, it's a very, it's a cause that we really, really need to address and, and get the word out there. And we, we very much appreciate you and, and Sama and, and everyone on the call. So this was a great webinar and, and I appreciate your, your support and commitment. Thanks, everyone. Uh, thank you, Anne Maria. Thank you, Neda, for making the time during your busy schedule and coming out, I think, of uh, maybe, I don't know, but coming out of the world or somewhere to be with us this morning. Uh, thank you, mm -hmm. Selma, for making the time to be with us again. And we look forward to you um, bringing in the diaspora in Canada from your network there uh, to support this course. Uh, I shared the link to the donation page uh, on the chat in the Facebook Live. Uh, Lena, also, I trust that you will continue to support this cause and uh, spread the word. Everybody on the live, thank you very much for your time this morning. And I and really, really need your help just with a quick share uh, to this live and this event and spread the word. Thank you very much. And with this, we'll say goodbye and we'll see you um, in another event in a few weeks. <laughs>